This bridge is fixable. It can last another 40 years. For me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to invest a lot of money in an asset that's failing. The high-level West Seattle Bridge has been closed since March, after significant new cracks were found in the concrete structure. But making the call to repair or replace the 36-year-old bridge is complicated, with many variables still in play. Certainty is not something that we have right now. How is the bridge closure impacting local communities? Traffic, I think, is a big issue. People want their voices heard. We hear from all sides as the fate of the West Seattle Bridge hangs in the balance. Next on City Inside Out. Welcome to this edition of City Inside Out. I'm your host, Brian Callanan. A major project in Seattle is about to get underway as Mayor Durkin makes the call to either repair or replace the West Seattle Bridge. But deciding the future of the bridge, shut down in March due to quickly growing cracks in its support structure, is not as simple a choice as it might sound. Many residents say a repair would restore traffic flow much more quickly and would be the more fiscally responsible choice in our COVID-stricken economy. But others worry about the safety, longevity, and maintenance costs following a repair and consider replacement as the better option. This week, we're breaking down the alternatives the mayor is considering for a project that will challenge city, state, and federal leaders for years to come. You might be surprised to find authentic Mexican street tacos at the La Chingona Taco Truck on South Michigan Street in Georgetown. But that's nowhere near the surprise owner Sandra Fauvet felt when traffic on Michigan became a mess and her business started drying up after the emergency closure of the West Seattle Bridge in March. And it was a shocker. Shutting down a bridge that carried more than 100,000 people a day shocked all of Seattle, already reeling at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. But a series of cracks in the bridge support structure, first discovered in 2013, started rapidly growing earlier this year and forced the March 23rd closure. Aside from restricted access via West Seattle's older low bridge from Harbor Island, the most direct route for traffic to get out of West Seattle is currently over the First Avenue South Bridge and through Georgetown. That means now it's a major hassle for cars to turn into La Chingona's location. And the problem may only get worse. It has impacted our business and we're thinking of the long run, once COVID's out and people are normally back to work, this will be impossible to manage, honestly. The repair option makes the most sense to us. Kevin Brovalite founded the group West Seattle Bridge Now and is leading the grassroots movement to fix the bridge as soon as possible. The Seattle DOT says the repair option that would have traffic back soonest by 2022 is Alternative 2, which would strengthen the steel tension cables in the bridge, costing $47 million up front and $916 million over a potential four-decade life cycle. This bridge is fixable. It can last another 40 years. But that's the upper range of the possible lifespan of the repair. SDOT says it could be closer to 15 years. Plus, a repaired bridge would need more scarce maintenance funds and would still need to be replaced with a seismically safer structure in the long run. I can't help but feel that the repair option two in this case is being shortchanged. Some community members are concerned the city is pushing for a replacement, which would take longer and cost more up front. What yeah, Brovalite calls the wrong that's choice that's in a COVID era economy. Taking on a massive capital project is financially irresponsible and, and unnecessary. We have to think about not just getting folks um, back on the bridge as quickly as possible, but we have to think about how uh, that bridge, repaired bridge, is going to last over time. Heather Marks is SDOT's West Seattle Bridge Program Director and a West Seattle resident herself. Personally, it's been, it's been a challenge. SDOT says the least expensive replacement option over its lifespan is Alternative 4 with a new superstructure, costing $383 million up front, more than a billion over a projected 75-year lifespan. This would close down the bridge, possibly until 2026. There's not one 
more important project in terms of speed in the U.S. than this project. But HNTB, the engineering firm SDOT has hired, has just proposed an alternate superstructure replacement that could cut the construction timeline to three years, an option that may seem more palatable, but still needs to be studied. This is an intriguing option, uh, and I, I'm very happy it's come forward. I think this is about political will. SDOT says it may be easier to get federal funding to replace a closed bridge as opposed to replacing a repaired one. But in the end, after input from SDOT and the community, it's the mayor's call. The mayor's goal, as well as SDOT's goal, is to make sure that we are getting the speediest, uh, most certain, and most safe uh, option to uh, repair or replace the West Seattle Bridge. In the meantime, we're really worried about somebody getting hurt. Allie Thompson is on the Bridge Community Task Force and part of the South Park Neighborhood Association. Some areas around South Park, like West Marginal Way, have seen traffic nearly triple since the bridge closure. Thompson's glad to see the city's work on 175 mitigation projects like new signals, low bridge access enforcement, speed radar signs, and future plans to help pedestrians get to the Duwamish Longhouse. We've seen a huge increase in speeding and vehicles and we're seeing environmental impacts down here. She's leaning toward a replacement option, yet says, the city's investment in traffic calming measures has to keep on rolling too. We are seeing them try to work to mitigate the impacts, but that work is gonna to have to continue for the length of the, the outage of the bridge. Everybody has their own lens that they're looking at this. Laura Radford is a bridge task force member and executive director of the West Seattle Junction Association, an area that's suffering but surviving. She says the task force is considering many options including the new fast-tracked concept that SDOT's engineering firm has presented. The rapid option was certainly a curveball. But it will come down to a balance, responding to an urgent need for relief, making safety a priority, and investing wisely for the future with a choice that's much bigger than a bridge across the Duwamish River. When you're holding the lives of thousands and thousands of people in your hands, you have to make sure you're making the right decision, even if it's uncomfortable and even if it's inconvenient. And joining us for this discussion, we have with us Sam Zimbabwe. He is director of Seattle Department of Transportation. We also have with us Seattle City Council member Lisa Herbold. She represents District 1 from West Seattle down to South Park. And Paulina Lopez, the co-chair of the West Seattle Bridge Community Task Force. And Sam, I want to start with you here. So SDOT recently released its cost-benefit analysis with the West Seattle Bridge Project and said the superstructure replacement option, known as Alternative 4, was the best overall performer. That's a quote there. The drawback to that, of course, it could take as long as six years to complete compared, compared to a two-year estimate for the repair option. Then the repair will be a lot cheaper up front, but would still need to be replaced in the future. I just want to know, Sam, how did SDOT balance this and come to the conclusion that a replacement was a better choice? Um, thanks, Brian. So, you know, let me start by saying this. We know this is a really challenging time for everybody, and uh, we're working with speed and urgency to try to bring forward the best information to, to uh, enable the mayor and, and the city to make the, the right decision of how to move forward here. Um, the cost-benefit analysis was really trying to put together an apples to apples comparison of the full range of alternatives that we've discussed and talked about and be able to put that information in a form where, where we can make these types of comparison. The CBA isn't a decision making, uh, it's a decision making tool, it's part of the process. It is not something that tells us exactly what the right, uh, the right way to think about this or where the right path to go forward on, but it is a really important part of our decision making process. Got it. Got it. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of these different options in just a little bit. But Councilmember Herbold, uh, I'll go to you next. You recently conducted a non-scientific poll in your district about this, and nearly 60 percent of the people surveyed favored a repair option. You had a zip code analysis with this that showed more people favored replacement the further south you go. Uh, what did those numbers tell you? What option do you support when it comes to repair or replace? I'm still keeping an open mind. I think I, um, I, I lean um, repair uh, because of the, um, you know, really acute awareness um, that um, the impacts here in, uh, in West Seattle and South Park are just so acute. Um, and the, the idea that, um, that those impacts would continue um, for 
five, six longer years is is a, of a, a real real concern, um, as it's been said by many people. Um, if we weren't in the middle of a of a global pandemic, this would be uh, not just the biggest news in the state, but this would be be very very big national news. Um, and so. Um, I, I think uh, an option that could be uh, delivered by 2022 and with $50 million and um, has a, a good chance of um, uh, continuing its uh, life cycle of another 40 years um, is uh, an issue, is, a, is an option that ad addresses many of the, the concerns that I'm hearing from folks about uh, length of impacts. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, Paulina, I'll go to you next here. Uh, you live in South Park. You lead the Duwamish Cleanup Coalition. You've got some signs behind you, too, talking all about it. I, I know you're dealing with a lot of the traffic environmental issues of the bridge closure very personally. And you're also co-chair of this bridge community task force. And you've heard a lot of input about this. How do you balance these options of repair versus replace? Which one do you prefer? I'm still open, as Council Member um, Herbal says, you know, we, we have to be uh, making a very informed decision. And I think that's what we have been doing through the community task force and bringing um, all the information we don't want to make, even though I appreciate um, Director Zimbabwe saying this needs to a speed uh, or an urgency because of um, everything that is happening to the, our West Seattle fellows, but also um, to the communities that are impacted around it, like Georgetown, South Park, Soto, um, Delridge, all these um, different communities. Um, and you know, through through the different meetings, um, I think um, I'm grateful to learn all the different options. Um, however, uh, you, we want um, a decision um, that will be made with the less impact on the ones that are, have already impacted uh, for the longest time. You know, like I, I represent uh, the Wamish Valley community, Georgetown and South Park, um, that has already 12% uh, percent higher asthma rates compared to, you know, um, nine in the whole Seattle area. So with when we are thinking of options and having it was pretty um, um, discouraging for us to hear what is going to happen to 100,000 vehicles um, extra and to add into these burdens that we have already uh, in our community. So we want to make sure this decision is well thought out. Um, this also has opened up a good opportunity for us to talk about the issues we've been talking in a long time and how connectivity, um, how uh, fairness, equity plays into this. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I, I think once the decision is being made, I hope it's based on equity. Um, I hope it's based on environmental impacts and also um, okay. on uh, the basis of uh, fairness for everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, Sam, I want to try to jump, jump in here and get some more details about the possible rapid replacement option that SDOT has put on the table here. The contractor, HNTB, says we could have a new superstructure in as few as three years. I want to talk about this. Why did SDOT introduce this idea at this point? It hasn't been vetted like the other alternatives I know. And are you confident that it could actually get built in three years at a reasonable cost? Yeah, that's a that's another great question. And just to provide um, some, you know, Councilmember Herbal talked about the the potential, as we've talked about in the cost benefit analysis, of having a repaired bridge uh, open sometime in 2022. Um, and the replacement options that we looked at in the cost benefit analysis uh, were more on the 2026 and beyond range for a replacement option. Um, as we brought on board our, our design consultant uh, HNTB, they brought an example that they've worked on the Lake Champlain Bridge connecting Vermont and New York, um, where they were able to do processes in parallel um, and do a, an accelerated bridge there um, that did things like um, make demolition and fabrication of steel members of the bridge simultaneous. Um, and mm -hmm. so we think this bridge has, this, this idea has a lot of merit. We haven't run all those issues to ground, um, but there's, uh, we think there's a lot of merit to pursue some of those ideas and see if that's something that we, we can make work. I think from, from my perspective, if we're talking about a replacement, uh, a repair versus a replacement that would open in 2026, that's a long time. Uh, and as Paulina said, the impacts are, are substantial already. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, I'm a West Seattle resident and parent myself. Um, I'm, I'm dealing with it uh, day in, day out uh, myself with my family. Um, I, I think we're, we're trying to figure out every possibility to to accelerate those those options, so it's hard to say right now whether that you know 2023 timeline that HNTB has raised is is actually feasible. But that's those are that's some of the work that we need to very quickly and with urgency be able to advance. 
Thank you very much for that, Sam. Paula, let me jump to you next, if I could. What was the reaction of you, uh, the task force also, to this newer option for a possible rapid replacement? You know, it, it's definitely uh, uh, open a good, hopeful expectation. Um, we have been leaning maybe towards replacement. It's a big uh, investment, so we want to make it right uh, with communities. Uh, that has been the conversation here locally. Um, but if we can have something that is going to work in the shorter amount of time, that is not... Um, that it has enough environmental uh, uh, studies, so impact assessments, um, what is going to mm -hmm. happen to the river, for instance, as you mentioned, my science, a river that has already taken a lot of abuse. We don't want to make sure that because we're speeding something, um, a, a, a bold action, which I, I do think it's bold, um, uh, but we want to make sure that it plays uh, also an important conversation into all the stakeholders, uh, what is going to mm -hmm. happen, you know, talk about tribes, um, talk about uh, the sure. users, uh, maritime industry, and, and of course, uh, our communities and how the, the role play and how can these conversations turn into uh, this creativity that we have been asking for. How do we call for more connectivity uh, and, and the conversation, bring them along, um, connecting with mm -hmm. Seattle, connecting South Park, Georgetown, bike lanes, mobility, all these um, make it a very important um, uh, room for conversation and as we are yep. developing and learning more about this. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, I want to go to you next because you have been around City Hall for many years and you've seen plenty of these mega projects go over time and over budget. I know you've heard this from some constituents too. We've got an Alaskan Way Tunnel that was three years late, the monorail expansion. I don't even want to get into that, but are you confident a rapid replacement for the West Seattle Bridge could only take three years? So, I mean, I think it does uh, take not just a leap of faith, but a commitment to, um, to uh, a you know, a backbone of political will and a strong unified community. Um, and I, I think whether or not we could we could deliver a project um, in that amount of time um, is really an open question at this point. I think there are still a lot of things that we um, need to uh, dig into a little bit more. So I, I am I'm I'm not I'm looking at this uh, option with uh, what I hope is healthy skepticism, not because I don't think that we can't pull together as a community um, to deliver a project um, on 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 time and on on budget, um, and that we don't have the resolve and the political will to do so. But um, I just want to make sure that um, because this option has not gone through the CBA, I don't want that to create an artificial. Um, uh, um, move towards the replacement option before we've mm -hmm. sussed out how realistic it is, because yeah. I uh, I just I'm concerned if we if we if we choose replacement and then for some reason we find out that this rapid replacement option isn't viable, then we're left with option four, um, which is um, a, a replacement option that you know we're looking at at a six year delivery timetable. Right. Right, right. Uh, Sam, I, if you want to touch on some of these issues that Lisa and Paulina have brought, uh, brought up, please do. I also would like you to work in, if you can, and try to work this in the time we have here, how light rail is factoring in here too, because I know you've been talking with Sound Transit. You want to make sure that this project works with that. Light rail expected in West Seattle by 2032. Sure, uh, that's a great question too. Let me, let me first talk a little bit about, um, you know, I think uh, maybe nobody feels the pressure of, of delivering something more than I do um, and whether that's a replacement or a repair. Uh, and so I, I, I think it is in some ways the technical challenges are among the easiest parts of the things to solve because we can figure out mm -hmm. some of the engineering. I will say that we are, you know, we very soon after the that we had to close the bridge for, for safety reasons, we started the stabilization process. Since the stabilization process started, and that, that's ongoing now, since that started, the cracks that, that led us to close the bridge continue to grow. Um, we think they're under control and they're, it's, 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 you know, we're, we're monitoring all of that, but we're not out of the woods yet with this structure. And so even where we think and our technical advisory panel thinks that repair is possible, we're still in the the sort of early stages of making sure that that actually is also deliverable from a from a technical perspective, um, and mm -hmm. that in and of itself is a major major F undertaking to repair the bridge. I don't want to be dismissive of um, the technical challenges that will go along with this that we still learn more about as we go into uh, get through the stabilization process. Starting next yeah. week, we'll be um, stringing 
uh, post-tensioning cables, large cables right. uh, to, as part of that process, and we'll continue to learn more. So we're not taking anything off the table at this point. If we're on a replacement path, um, before we do things that can't be undone, um, we need to be able to answer the questions that, that um, Councilmember Herbold is, is raising and making sure that we can deliver on, on the commitments that we're making to the community. Um, I think that the light rail, the combination of light rail um, is something that is very attractive uh, from, from a conceptual perspective. Um, it obviously has some challenges and Sound Transit's right now in the midst of an environmental impact statement process for the whole of the West light rail extension. Um, and uh, has, has up until this point, because we, you know, we had a functioning bridge that really couldn't accommodate uh, light rail, um, was thinking about a separate crossing. If we're on a repair mm -hmm. pathway, there really still also is not an option for combining structures. Um, if we're on a replacement pathway, there is the possibility, but there's a lot of technical, uh, there, there's some potential technical challenges. We continue to work very closely with Sound Transit um, on those on those technical issues, understanding sort of grade requirements, design requirements, everything down to how um, we and they would maintain and, and uh, inspect bridge structures, um, mm -hmm. making sure that we're we're compatible, uh, or and if not, making sure that we're not precluding um, the, the, the best transportation decisions. Um, I think um, Sound Transit's also, uh, it, because of the, the revenue impacts that we've all seen on the, in the transportation world, trying to figure out yeah. what the timing is of, of uh, their investments. And we don't want to get in a situation where we're waiting and, and precluding good decisions from a city perspective uh, because of uncertainty on the, the timeline of, of sound transit as well. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Herbold, I need to go back to you for a quick policy question here, if I could. I know one of the arguments in favor of a replacement kind of goes like this. We don't have as many maintenance dollars as we'd like, so let's build a newer bridge that won't need as much maintenance. And I know critic would say, wait a minute, if the city had been better at maintaining our bridges, maybe we wouldn't be in the situation. And I ask this because I know a lot of neighborhoods got some old bridges in Ballard, Magnolia, the U District that, that has some risks too. Your thoughts about that bridge maintenance now and in the future? We simply do not have sufficient resources uh, from for infrastructure maintenance. We cities cannot do it alone. We need the partnership of our federal government. That's why there's a $1.5 trillion dollar infrastructure uh, bill that's been stuck in um, the Senate since since July. For bridges alone, there's a um, I think a $123 billion backlog uh, in bridge uh, maintenance uh, nationally. And so this is this is a this is a huge problem. Um, we've recently had um, a city audit. I think they showed that we spent on average um, about six million dollars a year on bridge maintenance when, mm -hmm. we, when conservatively we should be spending at least 34 million dollars a year. Um, yeah. And despite the fact that we have this this conundrum that we cannot solve ourselves, I, I, I am concerned about picking a path um, that um, that relies on um, lower annual maintenance costs because of this conundrum. It feels to me like it's another way of avoiding um, having to deal uh, with with the maintenance issue. Um, it, if repair is is a better option because of um, the ability to deliver it quickly, um, and we are fairly confident that we can get forty years out of it. Um, then the fact that it's going to cost more every year, I don't think is a good reason to hmm. not pursue it. I need to move on to a new topic here. And Paulina, I want to go back to you. I think it's important to point out that SDOT's Reconnect West Seattle plan, 175 mitigation projects and counting, has helped a lot of neighborhoods deal with the bridge closure here and the traffic from it. But in the future, post-pandemic, which I hope is very soon, what else are you looking for from the city? Help for businesses, something along those lines as we get through this when it comes to really reconnecting West Seattle. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. You know, it's it's not... My involvement through this task force was not only to um, make sure that we get all the information to make this a uh, very important decision, and it's being, you know, tough understanding everything on the technical side. Um, but on the other part is um, how do we uh, make sure the city, um, you know, thinks of, of our Duwamish Valley, Georgian and South Park, um, also uh, reflects on those lack of investments that it has had in a community that is already being impacted environmentally for so many years. Um, how the derouting, it's going to bring safety. It has all, you know, we don't want to accommodate only for the people that has to go through our neighborhoods. 
But most importantly, how do we keep our community safe through these times? We have a, a very high um, a number of children in our neighborhood. So how do we keep them safe? There has taken a lot of even community-driven efforts, creating signs, please stop uh, and don't speed. Um, we have had my own son being in an accident for a speeder already. So how do we take this as an opportunity to look at the neighborhoods and see, you know, uh, on the transportation, on the mobility, as I said, all these investments that needed to be done um, and uh, it's going to keep our children safe. Um, we live in neighborhoods that don't have access to to um, grocery stores uh, to community centers, you know, Georgetown doesn't have a community center. How do we take this opportunity to look into the deeper and say, you know, well, treat us um, with dignity of uh, other neighborhoods that are already uh, enjoying of beautiful parks, of access to mm -hmm. green spaces. So uh, it has taken um, some good community driven process. We're grateful that we were able to partner with SDOT and the UN on this, um, but I'm actually looking forward to the future and um, um, look at this, what is happening right now what this uh, could uh, belong to. We, we do need sound barriers and how do we take this opportunity to even go further um, and think of this as an opportunity for uh, the city um, and the state. This is definitely a regional approach that needs to be done and um, looking into our communities. Thank you very much. We need to wrap up the show. Great conversation, everybody. I know we're expecting to see a final decision on repair versus replace from Mayor Durkin before the end of the year. Council Member Herbold, let me ask you first, what are the top things you think she needs to keep in mind? If you can try to keep it at 30 seconds, that'd be helpful. Please go ahead. Top things, uh, again, our uh, speed of delivering the, 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 the access um, and, and uh, equity issues um, and paying attention to those communities that have uh, really borne, borne the brunt of, um, of this uh, lack of access and um, borne the brunt of it when they've historically not had investment from the city. Got it. Uh, Sam, this is the mayor's call, not SDOT's. It's important to point that out. But what message do you want to make sure it gets through to her? Well, I think the same, we're talking about the same things. And when she talks to me about uh, about this, it's the same things that Councilmember Herbal just talked about, the speed, the certainty uh, that we can deliver. I, I also just want to say to Paulina's points about community partnership in this, I think these are also relationships that we're building now that hopefully last into the future and that aren't just uh, crisis driven, but can be the long term partnerships that we have with communities as we move through this this process and on into the future once we do have restored the transportation connection across the Duwamish. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Paulina, last word here. What message from the community do you want the mayor to be considering as she makes her decision? If you can keep it brief, please. We want to make sure that uh, she's looking at equity issues, environmental impacts, and making sure that we as community, and this is also coming to um, Greg, Mayor Nichols, and myself, and how do we unify and take this opportunity to move forward in um, working with each other and making the uh, decision that is going to help the neighborhoods um, to be together and uh, looking for opportunities in the future, as I said. All right, thank you very much all of you for your input here and we will be right back. What are people saying about the West Seattle Bridge on social media? One commenter says, the West Seattle Bridge should be replaced. I think it should be highly contingent on transit only lanes, up zones and expanded transit service though. Another says, need to commit to repairing the bridge and accelerate the timeline. You can do it. We'd like to know what you think. Send us an email at contact at seattlechannel.org or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Coming up next week, with the election right around the corner, we get the scoop from our panel of veteran political reporters. Which races are they covering most closely? And what do you need to know before you check that ballot? Don't miss out on our election roundtable next time on City Inside Out. I hope you join us.